What is going on guys? It is your boy TKD123 here back again with another installment of Save Slot, our weekly news show revolving around first party and third party news about PlayStation. Now first up here on the dock, this didn't, so you know, usually I do save slot in chronological order, okay? So the, uh, you know, stuff that happens at the end of the week happens at the end of the episode. However, we're gonna do something a little bit different here, and that is because we have the great Borderlands 3. It got announced today as of recording this video, and I haven't even seen the Borderlands 3 trailer yet. That's, I just came back from class, I'm gonna record this right now, because I have to go out of town this weekend, but beside the point, I just wanna get this out and get this recorded. Borderlands 3 officially got announced, and I've seen some screenshots, it's looking good, I like it a lot, everything's looking all good, I cannot wait for Borderlands 3, and you are actually seeing it on screen uh, before I even watch the full thing, so you know that's how that's how production works. But beside the point, uh, Borderlands 3 is uh, rumored to also have some more info come out on April 3rd. Uh, well, it's not even rumored; it, it was said by Gearbox as well. So they said that they'll have more info next week on April 3rd. However. There's one more thing coming out April 3rd as well, another big bomb show, which I was not expecting uh, for them to drop, you know, this, this, uh, at the same event, you know, at their PAX East panel. And that was that they are going to release Borderlands Game of the Year Edition. They officially announced it, there's a trailer, again, haven't seen it yet, but oof. Borderlands 1 is, is great, and if you guys aren't aware, it was never released on the Handsome Jack collection, so we've never gotten it on the PS4 until now. So great to see that it is coming out, and also it's coming out on April 3rd, the very same day that we'll be getting Borderlands 3 info, which is in turn, yes, you if you read your calendar right, it is next week. So, uh, I've been hooked on Division 2, but guys, oh man, it's Borderlands, I gotta, I gotta play it, I gotta play the first one, I missed it so much, back in 2009, I think last time I played it, it's gonna be crazy like that, but, uh, I am, I am hyped for those two. And the remaster also includes new shift codes, enhanced visuals for a player split screen co-op as well, and a lot more guns as well, and a really, really cool update to the Borderlands 1 game is that they're even adding the minimap to the HUD, which originally was not the case, it's really cool to see that they are kind of updating the game and making it more 2019-ish and stuff like that. It's really cool to see that there as well. Along with that, if you are a PSVR owner, uh, you know, Borderlands 2 VR is a great title for you to get. Uh, I haven't played it in VR, but I know a lot of people love it. And, uh, you know, as they have added PSVR aim controller, uh, you know, modes to the game, and I've been just overall just updating the game overall, they took it a step further here. So they announced that in the summer, they will be releasing all the DLC of Borderlands 2 for free with an update for Borderlands 2 VR. So really cool to see that there. A lot of people are really happy about that, so you'll be able to experience the entirety of Borderlands 2 in terms of just the main story and DLC in VR. And the last thing they did here, which I am shocked they actually did, uh, the the Handsome Collection that I have up there on over here on my shelf, the Borderlands Handsome Collection, which included both the pre-sequel and Borderlands 2, will be getting a 4K up-res update for PS4 Pro next week. And so really cool to see that there. Uh, it is again on April 3rd. Everything's launching April 3rd for some reason, but uh, April 3rd is going to be crazy. You will be able to play all the Borderlands on PS4 in 4k it's a great thing i cannot wait for it they they said they have 4k resolution some new textures and stuff like that all the good stuff that you would want and uh, it is great so really cool to see that there and it is a free update so no need to pay for it there and stepping back from the borderlands hype early this week we had the official first day to play playstation event which you can watch uh me and christian react to it live on the channel i will link it in the description but uh we had our you know stay at play event it was super fun really cool to you know hang out and kind of see what stay at play is going to be for the future of playstation but they also, you know, heavily focus on PSVR, which they did say they were going to do for Stay of Play. However, we did get some cool numbers about PSVR as of today. So as of today, the the, the current stall base for PSVR is 4.2 million units worldwide, which is a great number. Uh, it is very, very high and everything. And plus, I feel like it's going to get, you know, even higher with them announcing Iron Man VR and a bunch of other different uh, VR games that they announced here on the state of play so we should go check out that state of play link down in the description and also you know i'm just putting this on here just because it's honestly it's a joke it's the anti joke between me and save slot viewers what's happening but uh we have another kojima dead stranding news bit but it's not what you think it is okay so uh this one is kind of interesting so you know Hideo Kojima was talking about where they are at in terms of development with Death Stranding. And he says that they're at a critical phase at this current point, and this critical phase entails for him to play Death Stranding every day. So that's what he's doing right now. 
that's really the only new thing that is here worthy i don't know why people keep posting about this game you know i understand it's hype i understand it's great but uh you know and also it is kojima so i get it but i just had to throw this in here because you know for the jokes an upcoming game control by quantic dream that also has a date of august 26 i believe i'm pretty sure from last week uh but uh you know control is coming out obviously and the ps4 version will be getting exclusive content at launch with which will uh include a custom a mod which is a in-game ability for your character in control as well as a rare service weapon mod as well for your weapon to get a modification as well and two ps4 themes that will be also added to the game as well so and so if you're looking to snatch those you'll have to buy the game on ps4 but there's also more that is uh, going to be uh exclusive to control if you get the deluxe edition of the game you will also get access to two different bonus missions that you can play in control as well so pretty cool to see that they are kind of supporting control on the playstation standpoint and next up here let's talk about anthem you know what i'm saying guys you know how it goes i like anthem you know what i'm saying i'm sorry i want people to actually like the gameplay of anthem but anthem actually got a really cool update this week that uh removed the loading screen to go to the forge which i think is absolutely great that is such a good feature that was needed so bad however the bad thing was that you know when this update you know went and launched uh reddit blew up uh talking about how the update has had more bugs put into the game and more broken gameplay has been added to the game and stuff like that and just overall just a horrible update apparently and so i have a team that will have with my own eyes but uh just look out you know for uh people saying that 1.04 is definitely breaking anthem they're saying that uh cooldowns are a lot quicker now for some reason and like that, that's messing up people's flying ability in the game it's just it's just man like anthem can't go one day without a little bit of good news but uh we will see how that all irons out now let's talk about another sony patent that has been released this week this one's actually pretty interesting okay so so like this one hints at digital game trading for PlayStation users, which is a really, really cool thing that I actually like to, I would love for this to happen. But uh, they are saying that this whole thing could also work with physical games by the system generating a digital version of the physical game for you to trade. And so that is crazy, but I'm gonna read this quote here. It says, at a later date, the user is free to give away, sell or trade the digital copy to another party in transaction with terms based on, for example, the determined value of the, of the digital copy. So it looks like they will be, you know, having digital copies and they'll make a determined value of them i don't know how they're gonna you know gaze that or if they're just gonna declare we're gonna call this digital copy x amount of dollars whatever and that will be the rate for it i don't know but it's very interesting you know i think this this is definitely some next gen stuff and i'm liking it another big thing here is that sony has stopped selling digital games at physical retailers and so they sent out a massive wide uh, memo to all retailers that uh, hey we, we will not be supplying you digital games in the form of a physical card and so you, you know those cards at gamestop that you can buy the uh digital version but it's on like that you know kiosk card thing they will not be selling those anymore in store however they will be keeping of course the psn codes you can buy psn codes of course those will stay but uh, the other stuff will go and so i think this is a move to i guess uh i mean i mean i heard andrea renee talk about this on kind of for the games daily and just talking about how that you know she thinks that it is because for someone to refund a digital game that they bought in store is very difficult to track and difficult to you know have that process go smoothly and so i guess playstation is going to do this overwhelming thing where it's like hey only we can sell digital games in the playstation marketplace and ecosystem that way they can do refunds a lot easier so i think that's i think that's what they're doing i'm pretty sure that's what it is that's what andrew renee said so i trust her but uh you know and again to be fair that was just her speculation as well like there's nothing really sent stone and they never said why they are doing this but you can no longer buy digital games in the physical store and guys you all know i love me some wolfenstein of one and two are great and we have uh you know of course announced already for a few months now almost a year now honestly because it was last e3 wolfenstein young blood uh it's going to be a shorter wolfenstein game that will revolve around bj's kids and everything and so we got a new trailer for it and they released it it's coming july 2019 so i am hype for that i cannot wait for it it's gonna be 40 bucks too which is great and also um the digital deluxe edition will get you uh a buddy pass which you can play with someone else for free and so that's pretty cool to see out there because this is mainly a co-op game you can play as both sisters so i cannot wait to play this there's a trailer that's playing right now again i haven't watched it 
I know, guys, this is a weird episode, but uh, I'm sure it looks great because the because the artwork on the thumbnail of the video looks great, and I'm sure the trailer is too. Ubisoft has released their dates for E3 2019. They are the third person out here to officially declare that they are going to E3 2019, or maybe fourth, I forgot. But uh, they are going June 10th at one o'clock Pacific time. So pretty cool to see that they finally have that they finally have a release date for their E3 conference, and I cannot wait for it too because boy, if we get Watch Dogs 3. I'm going to lose it. I'm going to lose my mind if you get Watch Dogs 3. I really hope we do, but we will see. We will see, folks. We will see. And speaking of E3 2019, CD, CD Project Red has some pretty interesting quotes about this year's E3. And they said, I'm going to just read the quote. They said, quote, this year's E3 is going to be the most important one ever for us. We have really prepared a strong show. And so they're talking about Cyberpunk 2077 here. And I think... Uh, I don't know guys I mean you know I was I was definitely leading on we 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 will not know a release date still for this game this year but maybe we do maybe we do you know maybe maybe we we just might know when we're getting cyberpunk but we will know all at E3 2019. And last story here for this episode, we have another quote here from Cyberpunk, uh, from the guys that, you know, Project Red that are developing Cyberpunk 2077. And they uh, were asked, you know, what is the possibility of a cross-generation release? So, you know, a Cyberpunk releasing on PS4 and then PS5 simultaneously, or, you know, whenever the PS5 comes out and stuff. And so what we had a person from Cyberpunk say, said, quote, if there's an opportunity for us to launch Cyberpunk for another generation, we would want to do this probably and so uh that i think that's just them saying hey listen like it's not confirmed but if it were happening we would do it and so it looks like they are gonna do it that's just what i'm reading between lines but let me know what you guys see in the comments below and that has been this week's episode of safe slot if you all enjoyed make sure to leave a like on the video as well stay subscribed to playstation source to keep up with the latest and grace in the places down below you can see our links to our twitch our twitter our discord all the good stuff make sure to follow all those things down below in the description thank you for watching and as always greatness awaits